Instead of talking about our regular sponsor at www.audio, excuse me, audibletrial.com slash whiskey wine moon, where you can get a free audiobook download and free 30 day trial, I'm going to give props to the real sponsors of today's podcast. And who is that, you ask? That's you guys, the WWM Pod family. How, how can you sponsor us? We'll hop, skip, jump, or even drunkenly stumble on over to our website and lean on that brand new PayPal donate button on the right-hand side. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Your love offering helps keep the happy hour going. So thanks love in advance. Offering? <laughs> love offering? Yes, love offering. So thanks in advance for your continued support and now on to our regularly scheduled program. Um, welcome everybody to episode 64 of Whiskey, Wine, and Moonshine. We are Conscious Carol, Judge Judy, and Patty Patty. <laughs> <laughs> which one is which? I'm probably Conscious Carol. Yeah, yeah you, you know are. you're Conscious Carol and you know Smart is Judge Judy. <laughs> Okay. It's, somebody it's true. named me Patty Patty. I can't remember who it is, but somebody named me Patty Patty. Yes, Patty did. Miss Mark calls us Patty Patty and Patty Paula. <laughs> um, but for real, we are Lady Buddha, Miss Think Pretty Smart, and Sojourner Verdad, and we rep West Whiskey Wine and Moonshine. So Ooh. ladies, how are you guys doing? We're on a Thursday night instead of a Tuesday. How are y'all doing? Much better than it would have been on a Tuesday, because this Girl, has girls, been the list from I don't know where it's from. <laughs> But I'm glad it's leaving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Smart, how are you doing? Um, I'm pretty good. Um, I'll say that since we weren't, we didn't take Tuesday, I went to see Lucy. Af I, well, I, the tickets were purchased before I saw Rod of the Black Guy Who Tips say that it sucked. And so that's the way I spent my evening on Tuesday since we didn't do the show, seeing a sucky movie that sucked. <laughs> I saw it too. I didn't think it sucked. I thought, I guess I thought like Chris and Phenom did their review. I happened to listen to their review before I went and saw the movie because that's usually what I do is listen to what they have to say. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was prepared going in that it wasn't going to be what I thought it was going to be. Like I was prepared for like the scenes with the animals, the, you know, it's more like they said it was more like a foreign film, which was true. So I, I would have been like Rod and you were if I hadn't have listened to their podcast, which is, by the way, with movietrailersreviews.com if you guys want to check them out. I, yeah. I felt like maybe when they did it initially, there was a lot of science in it and a lot of smartness in it, and then they, in Final Cut, maybe edited it and dumbed it down a bit. For Americans. <laughs> well, yeah, for Americans. and But I felt, I mean, I'm obligated to see Scarlett Johansson's work because I love her face. So that in and of itself. She is, yeah. She yeah. does have a very striking face. And it was funny when, when um, Roz was live tweeting and he said, oh, she's going to become a computer. I remember because I'm so fascinated by her face. That when Wait she a minute. Going, I don't know what movie you're talking about. That's not a good one. It's not what you're gonna. It's not what you're gonna no. expect from the trailers. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I mean, I okay. it sucks if you go in it with expectations. Let me just put it like that. Okay. <laughs> well, I've only seen. You know, I don't really watch TV, so I only happen to catch a trailer in passing, and I was like, oh, okay, somebody I know wants to see it. So anyway, it's blah blah blah. Nothing go ahead. like the trailer. It's nothing like the trailer. Listen to um Insanity and Phenom's review before you go see it. Okay. Um, so what are you all sipping on this evening? Lady Blue? Well, I got like a splash of some leftover wine. Like we started the bottle yesterday and it just happened to be like literally this much left. So I don't even know what kind it is. It's a Zinfandel, red Zinfandel. Um, but mostly I'm going to drink this water and pretend that I don't really want some more wine because I do. But we're <laughs> out. I might need to send a text message to someone and ask for some wine. Hold on. <laughs> Smart, what you got over there? Um, well, first, I'd like to point out that I do have this Gatorade. Okay. Both of you hydrating. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and then I have a, a red wine that I ate with my chocolate frosting cupcake and fried chicken because that's how I roll. From, oh wait, chocolate frost pudding. What? I had a for dinner. I had a yellow cupcake with chocolate frosting and some fried chicken. 
You are such a negress. Well, you know what? I think so. Let's you say that, but let's acknowledge the restorative properties of <laughs> fried chicken. <laughs> Because it makes you feel. I mean, it made me. I, I made some for lunch because y'all know I got a deep fryer, and it it's really really good. And I just didn't get a, around to a vegetable. Oh stop! But she said the restorative properties. It restored my spirit. I, I was about to say she's gonna say restore my soul. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Swing low, sweet chariot. Yay, though I walked it. So anyway, wait, all you have is the Gatorade, or you have what's what else is that you got over there? The red <laughs> wine. It went with my chocolate icing and, and chicken. Oh, ch chocolate! Hold on, chocolate icing, red wine, and chicken. <laughs> well, there was a cupcake involved too. And a cupcake, yes, yes. and a cupcake. <laughs> um, well, all I have since on last episode, I kind of uh, annihilated a bottle of wine. Um, all I have is some water. And I took a melatonin earlier, and I'm also, because I'm tired, y'all, um, I also have um, some sleepy time tea. So as soon as this podcast is over, oh, and I'm wearing my jammies with the feet in. Are you going to um, make it to the end? Let's start I, there. I don't know. Listen, this sleepy time tea plus the melatonin. Um, but, yeah, I'm going straight to bed as soon as this is over. So, mm-hmm. Y'all, she lying. She going to be on WhatsApp. Ooh. If y'all keep talking to me like y'all do, let me tell y'all what they do. They start conversations at like 11.30. Who is they? These conversations <laughs> that require thought and answers. I'm usually asleep. It's only if I wake up. And then you wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning answering questions. So I'm, I'm deep in REM sleep, and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Turn off notifications. It's really that simple. <laughs> <laughs> Blah, blah. All right, so let's get into the feedback um, from yeah. our, I'm still calling them toasters because we don't have another name for them, mm. but these are the folks who spread the word and interact with us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and by word of mouth. Mm. So first of all, um, special thanks again to uh, our special guests and friends of the show from last week's show when Lady Buddha was gone, um, Karen from The Black Guy Who Tips, who everybody left some sort of feedback that the first lady was preaching from the pulpit. So I kind of feel like yes. instead of her being Southern Comfort, she has to be like prophetess Karen or something. <laughs> she was dropping a word. Yes, she was. So so thank you. You missed the live show. You have to go back and watch it on YouTube because he like, you have to see him ascend to his ultimate light skin form because he started being Goldie the Pimp, which was priceless. So you have to not just listen to it, you have to actually wow. see it on YouTube. I did want to give them a special shout out. Wait, wait, one, um, more thing, Sandra, one, more thing, one more thing about LB. Um, and I tweeted this to him and I want other people to investigate this because I observed um, last weekend in starting to rewatch The Wire, which I do at least every quarter, um, that LB's voice and Brody's voice same damn thing. It's this light skin. Huh? I said from the wire. The wire. It's like this this light skin tone that they both have. <laughs> this light skin East Coast tone. Yes, it is. It is. I yes. gotta go back and watch. I gotta yes. go back and watch. Um, from Twitter we got you know shout outs from Rod from the Black Guy Who Tips. We got Queen Neen from the End Deep Show and Recap the Recap. Um, Ted A. Go from the Breakfast for Dinner podcast, which is one of um, you know my favorites because I, I we've never seen them leave feedback before, but I did want to give them a shout out because they shouted us out. Uh, yeah, da, da, Dago. Yes, that um, they, but they're really cool. Um, Rich from Two Guys One Show. Um, from the listeners, Lady Roll, do not touch my hair. That's an actual Twitter handle, which made me laugh. Um, <laughs> so Crisable, y'all have to go to Twitter and see So Crisable's tweets. Because she ended up calling LB the beige rage. Oh, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> that was so awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, your hood lawyer, who is Shirley Jenkins, of course, she was um, pubbing us via Twitter, so thank you. Um, Mrs. Nick, who, told, who said she was happy that our convos were able to go on without being cut short. And I, you know, just wanted to say that I agree. Like, even on the Purpose Driven podcast, we really only talked about that subject for like 10 minutes before we had to go into or Orange is the New Black. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm happy we're back to full shows too. Um, ask T and D and then naturally D. 
Um, also from Twitter, welcome to the show, Darth Jada, Miss Beaver, a Yellow House official ML, Lucifer, Lucifer Bigglesworth. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, Brian Howard, Damani Wilson, Vivacious Val, and Miss Jess Eleven. So welcome, you guys. And then from Facebook, um, we'd like to welcome Ruth, Tiana, Brian, Latone, Cedric, and John. And then special shout out to Chrissy from last week um, where we read her feedback to the How Do You Want to Feel um, question. And she said that she might be joining the Hangout tonight. So if you are here, hey, boo, hey. Hey, um, and then going on to Stitcher, Natasha left us a comment on our Conscious Uncoupling episode, and she said, fabulous show even with the boob shaming. And I just want to point out that that came from Conscious Carol and Judge Judy. It didn't. Please, Patty Patty out of it. You stop lying on me. Stop it. Really? You it up. You're the one that brought it up on what? I did bring it up. I said I was surprised to see them. That's all I said. You opened the door to Judge Judy. I did open the <laughs> door, but she chose crack. to walk through it. <laughs> you knew she was gonna walk through it. I really, I really, I didn't know it was gonna go take a life of his own. Especially I'd like to say, let me just book. let me just pause here and say I'm not Judge Judy. I'm Observation Annie. Okay. <laughs> Observation Olivia. Okay, Olivia. <laughs> mhm. That's who you are. Um, we got a couple of comments too on uh, Stitcher from Stretch Walls. He says one of my new favorite shows. I don't drink, but I am binging on whiskey, wine, and moonshine. Hilarious, salacious, and insightful. Salacious? I would just love to. Have Huh? Salacious? Yeah. Amen. Salacious. I would just love to hang out at Denny's with these three ladies. Denny's? Um, <laughs> and then he says, I yeah. now look forward to listening every week. They don't sell alcohol at Denny's, and even though you don't drink, we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that Lady, was nice. Keep going. Listen, let me get through the comment. Lady Buddha is a refreshing breath of fresh air from the antiquated ideas of most black women. So thank you, Stretch Walls, for leaving a comment. And then I think this is Silky, yeah. or maybe Silky. It says, friends in my head. I listen to the ladies often and totally feel like these are my close personal friends in my head. I will make it into the chat at some point. Please do. Please come join us in the chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and we got a couple of more comments uh, from YouTube. Um, let's see, from the Random Roundtable, which was last week's episode, DJ Food and Drink says, Sojo did too much cussing and wine drinking to be sporting a halo, because I was wearing a halo on the show. And he I said, well, I ain't said nothing. My halo out. Hold so on. Listen, I just want to say that a saint is just a sinner who fell down and got back up. So I we fall yes. down. Yes. <laughs> Um, and then Jeffrey, who's also in the chat tonight, giving us a couple of comments. Um, he says she was good, and of course, Miss Smart is. Uh, wait, sorry, that wasn't Jeffrey. Mobile Greek said, "Damn, this show was good," and of course, Miss Smart is always right. Don't encourage her. Let's not say slow. Yes. He said, great show and gold star. Um, so thank you, Mobile Greek. And then Jeffrey said, I like this show. It was good to watch. I love your podcast. So thanks, Jeff. Aww. Um, So those are, let's see, our feedback comments. And we just want you guys to know, leave us a five-star review on iTunes. We will read it. Um, also, if you leave five-star reviews on Stitcher, just like we read the ones that these people put, we will read those on the show. And then, like, if you retweet us, share our stuff, holler on us at Facebook, Google Plus, or whatever, we'll also definitely give you a shout-out on this show. So thanks for everybody who's been supporting us so far. Um, before we actually get into, like, the pleasure principle, I did want to talk about the trailer that I posted, which was actually Janet Jackson's old video from, was it 1986, 87? I don't know what year it was. All I know is I was in elementary school, but it was the pleasure principle. You were in elementary um, school. No, you weren't. She lying. I know. She lying. My elementary school was K through 7. So I was like, like that's like I was in high school at the time, like right in at night. Yeah, you would have been like we're eighth grade, and I was still in elementary. I'm gonna look um, it up. Yeah, I was watching when I was watching the video. It reminded me of Beyonce's transition because this was her control album. So this was the album when she 
asserted her independence. She kind of broke off from her dad's thumb. And then she started to, and this video was where she wore like the fitted guest jeans that threw every that's man right. into a tail. That's why I thought that's I was a because I know I wore some jeans just like it. Amen. <laughs> But you ain't look like Janet in those guest jeans. I look pretty damn good in my jeans. Hold on, slow down. <laughs> but it was 1986. Girl, you're so fast. You see what? You're a fast tail girl trying to wear some tight yeah, guest jeans. I did. You're to I ain't wear baggy that's, jeans in the 80s. That's you the want one thing I really wanted. That's the only material thing that I ever wanted growing up with some guest jeans. And my ass looked good in them. And I was very clear about that. <laughs> see, she's <laughs> always been a fast tail girl. Take the halo off. <laughs> it was 1986. So I was in middle school. Anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, so Janet was wearing, you know, the tight jeans or whatever, and then she started to become, because of course we saw from future albums, she became more and more comfortable with her sexuality, which as I was looking at it, I was wow, this is kind of parallel to Beyonce's journey that she's having in 2013, 2014 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> I saw um, as they released the Fifty Shades of Grey trailer, have you guys seen that? I have. Nope. I haven't. You saw it. Well, I mean, it's the trailer for Fifty Shades of Grey Cups. We know it's the, you know, book that had all the women's panties, like, moist and stuff. Um, oh, anyway. Yeah. Except well, for Lovey. Okay. It definitely didn't have hers. Right, because I, I didn't see, I mean, I didn't read the book, but from what I did hear about the book, it seemed like a panty moistener for boring bitches. Right. I That's what I heard, too. That's what I heard, half too. The book. Yeah, I read half the book, and I was like, is this what everybody's thinking is so... Like taboo and you know whatever. Anyway, yeah, I'm just saying that this book that became very popular. I'm just saying it became very popular. <laughs> but um, anyway, in the trailer, basically what Beyonce is doing is she's remakes. She's remixing Crazy in Love, and it sounds very. It's very slowed down. It's very sensual. I like it. Like her, her uh oh is like uh oh, you know that kind of thing. So anyway. This started a million think pieces, one of which is, <laughs> oh, Lord. what is the feminist Beyonce doing on the Fifty Shades of Grey trailer? And this is from Alexandria, Alexandra Latelier. Anyway, she says, what is Beyonce, feminist icon, doing on the movie trailer for Fifty Shades of Grey, a story that has been criticized as wildly sexist? In recent years, we've come to respect Beyonce for empowering women with her music, speaking up on why women should hold on to their independence, and aligning herself with such campaigns as Sheryl Sandberg's Ban Bossy initiative. Just this week, Beyonce posted a, a photo of herself as Rosie the Riveter. There's even a college chorus that looks to be this impact. So why? So isn't it odd that Beyonce would al align herself with Fifty Shades of Grey? Beyonce is sex positive. She empowers women. Fifty Shades of Grey glamorizes violence against women and trumpets the idea that women are happiest when a man is in charge. So basically this whole article is on why is a so-called feminist, because you know Beyonce has to reapply for her feminist card like every other week. Apparently. Um, <laughs> but why is she aligning herself Fifty Shades of Grey? Which reminded me of when Janet went into her whole bondage thing and you know her whole sexy thing she kind of if they if we would have had think pieces back then there would have been a million think pieces about Janet so um what do you guys think about this latest criticism of B? I think that people are looking for a reason to oust her out of the feminist club um I think that feminists there's a there's this subgroup of feminists that believe that women can't like anything that men like like if men are enjoying it, you have to be against it. Right. And you know, again, they're looking for a reason to oust her. They weren't successful with her album and, you know, her, you know, talking about having sex with her husband and being a mother and being a businesswoman. So they're always going to look for reasons and this woman is hoping that this sticks. She's hoping that she got a lot of hits from this. I think is stupid. I think that there are some women who enjoy what is in Fifty Shades of Grey. It What's is. wrong with that? Right. I mean, first of all, the, the, the term feminist icon as applied to someone who recently started to declare themselves a feminist is strong and misleading to begin with. Um, it's already kind of setting up to be argumentative. But, you know, this idea that women, what did you say? Women are happiest when, what was the line? 
Something so, about yeah. when men are in charge. I mean, but sometimes that's true, damn it. And when you're a feminist, <laughs> you get to choose. Yep. If you're a boss ass bitch all day at work, sometimes you want to come home and you do want your man to be in charge. How about that? That's and the that's first thing I thought too. of. That's the first thing I thought of. I was like, you know, when when men who are alpha males or, you know, doing whatever, when they're into what is it, BDSM and they mm -hmm. want a dominatrix to come walk over their back and <laughs> Some yeah. heels and some tight leather pants. And what they say, oh yeah, that man is in charge all day. It's okay for the woman to take care of him, you know, and be in charge in this capacity. Why couldn't that be the same for her? Or I mean, who even knows that that's what she, she's doing? First of all, let's just rewind it all the yeah, way back. Rewind, she's rewind. We don't even know. <laughs> she's doing a song for a movie. That's <laughs> it. Like that's all she said. She didn't do a cameo in the movie that we know of. She didn't. Yeah do anything but a song for the movie. But right. if let's say it was like a, I don't know, a, a, a cameo appearance on it, even if that was the case, there are a lot of people who are in positions of power all the time that when they get home, they do want to chill out and be second in command. Or mm -hmm. hell, not even be in command at all. Be commanded. And that's okay. And yes, some feminists may like to be choked and thrown up against what it's not violence if it's consensual, in my opinion, you know, because like this, this, this movie glorifies violence against women. Those were two consenting adults sharing an experience. Now, I didn't read the whole book, so I don't know. Ooh, Buddha dropped off. I don't know if she said no and he said yes. I don't know any of that stuff. But from what I'm understanding, it was a consensual experience between the two people. So, anyway, from from well. The other thing I think that this person is missing as a, you know, whore for hits, um, using Beyonce's name, is that what Beyonce did was sold the soundtrack. Because right. I'm going to buy it just based on the, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm, I'm buying it. I mean, hey. I mean, yeah, we didn't even hear the whole song. We didn't even hear the whole song. Right. All I we heard was, uh-oh. I don't need to hear the whole song. <laughs> it's Beyonce purring. I'm there for it. Right. So here's the other thing. I mean, I didn't, because I dropped off, so I'm not sure if you all touched on this. I mean, just because you decide to make a piece of art for commercial purposes does not mean that you have a philosophical alignment with the money that you're making in that, in that particular arena. So, I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, we you can separate. I mean, some people, it'd be different. I mean, some people do, you know, create art and they only participate in art because it's aligned with their spiritual purpose, their soul, whatever. And some people are like, well, but I still got to go eat. I got to feed Blue and my man. I like the nice house I got. And so I, do, I want this check. And mm -hmm. it's not that serious because maybe she liked Fifty Shades of Grey. I mean, it's just not that serious all the time. Everything doesn't have to be that serious. Right. And I kept thinking, I can't wait till she gets to the point where Janet eventually got to that point, except for after you, she did have the Super Bowl scandal. But it got to a point with Janet where she didn't give a damn about any of this. And I don't think that Beyonce cares, but I'm I'm kind of waiting for the day where she kind of fades off, where everything she does is not a statement that's, that you use to, you know, make a statement against society or culture or, you know, whatever. I just want her to be able to develop into it. It's, it's enjoyable, and I, I said this when we did the Beyonce episode, when she did the album. I'm enjoying watching her journey because I was too young to enjoy Janet's journey. But you, just were young, to you were too young, and we also didn't have social media. We also didn't have people feeding off of the celebrity. Like, whatever right. she does, there are going to be hundreds of think pieces. When Madonna did what she did, when she did that whole book, like, with, with uh, what's his name, Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy right. We didn't have a think piece society. And yeah, there were some articles written, but yeah. every freaking Sally with a MacBook couldn't write a think piece and get it published widely. So right. now we have that. Yeah. yeah. And, yep. and you're absolutely right. Even bringing up Madonna, you know, she went through her transition as well. It was like every, and even though there were articles, there were criticisms. Every single move they made didn't seem like it was just as as picked apart as Beyonce's are. So I can't wait for her to transcend that part of her career where she can just chill out and just be like, you know what? 
I'm walk out in a bra and it's all right, <laughs> you know, and and nobody says anything. So it's not gonna happen until the next Beyonce comes along. That's true. Cause I mean, Rihanna, you know, Rihanna is yeah, yeah. I love Rihanna. Don't even bring her up because let me just say here publicly, <laughs> Rihanna stole my 27 year old body. <laughs> And because of that, I am a true fan of hers. Like, I feel like I passed the physical torch from the neck down to that bra. <laughs> and she is holding it. She is out in these streets with, with, with carnival outfits of bedazzled nipples. And I am there for it. I love but you her. you know what? I wonder because re even though, yes, people say things about Rihanna, Rihanna also doesn't get the think pieces that Beyonce does. Cause but they I get scare her because they know Rihanna will will clap back on their asses here yeah, with the yeah, whatever and drag them in a hundred and forty characters. She will because what? Who was that? Was it MTV or somebody who made a comment about Rihanna one time? And she was like, "Wow, Rihanna ran out of fucks to give." I mean, it yeah, was the funny yeah. thing ever. <laughs> so is that the key? So is the clap back the key? Because Janet didn't clap back either. So is that the key that you have? Half back for people to leave you alone because I feel like that's sad too, you know, because some people aren't clap backers. So, yeah, but, but Riri is, and I think that has helped her. But at the same time, I think I think Beyonce's lack of clap back has also helped her too. So, there is like this, this dichotomy of either you go hard or you sit silently and let people play in the mud by themselves. You mm -hmm. stand quietly in the elevator and just, no, it's funny. Away. That's yeah. what I WhatsApped you guys the other day when I was watching the OWN channel and I, I saw her little thing with Oprah for the first time and I realized, you know, like she she never addressed people because once she went on to talk about Blue and being pregnant and being married and all this stuff and I realized she never asked all the controversy with her pregnancy. She never said, so there, you see in my video, here's my pregnant stomach or even, you know, when she was talking about Jay, you know, how people have had all these rumors about them. And the only thing she did was show through her face that she was genuinely in love with him. Like, I, I was telling you guys, if you looked at when she talked about him, like, her eyes were tearing up. And, you know, it was just like she just allowed that to speak for her as opposed to feeling like she had to defend or go against everything somebody said about her. So you're right. You know, I guess there are two ways to handle it. But I'm, I'm really tired of all the Beyonce think pieces. Like, she couldn't even make a, a trailer for a movie with that booming issue. Well, so, two things. I noticed that Lady Buddha has more beverage. It's and, water. It's water. That's what you say. And um, in vodka. Drunken Love, he does say beat the up like, you know, whatever. So I'm surprised we haven't had an influx of, of think pieces about how Jay and Beyonce are into S&M. So it makes sense for her to be on the Fifty Shades of Grey album. We were too busy oh, like, being mad at Jay for that year. They but were mad at Jay for that lyric. They That's are, all I They said it was domestic violence. They didn't even, they jumped over the BDSM into, oh, this is this is domestic violence. Like, they skipped all over that. So they did have some think pieces, but it was all about him glorifying domestic violence as opposed to. Tina and Ike, as opposed to just taking that and letting it be a metaphor for something else. Right. He wasn't a metaphor. He was very clear about what he beats up. He right. I know. He was clear about what he beats up, but when it, the whole Eat the Cake anime, they were like, because he added that on, then now he's talking only about the way that it was represented in that movie and the fact that Ike's character was someone who was known for domestic violence. That's what the think pieces told me. That's what the think pieces told me. Christopher did that Cake Cake song and. To me, I feel like that idea of eat the cake anime and cake, 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 cake. I feel like those are those are hand in hand there. And it's not you know, that direct quote. That's what people were freaked out about, and they were like, hmm? "And I didn't understand that." I know we're going all off topic, but I didn't understand <laughs> how they even went from eat the cake anime like that. Everybody has said, well, almost everybody has quoted a line from "What's Love Got to Do with It?" You no, ain't got that's to not true. Me, but what? That's you not know, true. I mean, like almost every these, black person. Yeah, but but those were black. But the, okay, what I saw were black people commenting on it, and and to us, yeah. "What's Love Got to Do with It?" was like the coming to America of our generation as well. Everybody knew the lines back and forth, just like the color purple. You well, told Harpo to beat me. One of I mean, the, okay, so. I feel like there are, it's a situation of what I call dual social citizenship, mm -hmm. where 
black people, we, we almost have to have it. And if you go look, it's like sort of along the same lines as Boykin triple quandary theory and that we, many of us are socialized to know these black things, but we also know how it looks in the general mainstream non- Right, quote unquote, non majority black world. Mm -hmm. And so I can see, like, you guys remember the lady who wrote the piece of the think piece was like anime, as in, you know, right. like, yeah, Japanese, uh, yeah, Japanese uh, animation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She doesn't get. And so I feel like sometimes we assume that people get our cultural references when they don't. Like, I can't go to work and say, my coworker, who most of my coworkers are white, and say, you're rocking a Gordon Gartrell shirt. It looks ridiculous. Is that a real Gordon Gartrell? No, but I know that in my personal social circle, even the friends I have who are white, they watched the Cosby Show too, and then in that situation, they can recognize Gordon Gartrell. So they too have dual social citizenship. But for much of quote unquote mainstream America, they don't have dual so social citizenship. That's they have white that. social citizenship. Then why even do that to ourselves? Like, for example, if if the if the other cultures would have thought, like, let's say, like everybody outside of the black community thought it was anime, like the anime characters, yep. we're the ones that blew up the spot and basically put on this whole different construct to it. So why why do we do that? Like, why do we pick apart? Oh, because we need hits too. We need hits too. We need blog hits. Because, no, no, it's because it's just back to what we talked about several episodes ago. People are traumatized, mm -hmm. and they're placing their trauma within okay. whatever just happened in this art. And so they're going to pick it apart from the lens of whatever it is that they have experienced that has caused them harm. And so now they can, are going to be outraged, and then they're going to write a think piece to demonstrate their outrage. That's what it is. Well, I think some people aren't traumatized. They just want to have some block hits. Oh, yeah. Well, then there's that. Because yeah. that, yeah, because I don't think some people are sitting there with trauma and they heard that song and, and it was a trigger warning for everybody. I, I really don't think that. I think somebody was like, you know what? This this album getting a lot of hits. If I write about this song, I'm going to get a lot of hits and I'm going to mm -hmm. be a lot, on a lot of panels as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and my platform is blah, 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 blah. This falls in line with the image and brand that I've created for myself, so I'm going to go ahead and ride this wave. I, yeah, I, I don't think everybody is, is reacting from a place of trauma for it. Oh, definitely not. You know, we always got our, our what do we call it, our opportunists. Ambu ambulance yeah. blog. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mic check, mic check. Yes, LB, we see you. Right, right. I was just reading his tweet. I yeah. can't feel translucent. Um, ooh. <laughs> Golly. He's gonna clown. Oh God, he's gonna clown. Oh, yeah, but we see you. I'm like, okay, but let me tell for everybody who left a comment on Twitter <laughs> about the translucent comment, y'all missed before we play on the show. Y'all don't see the hazing that goes on behind the scenes for everybody that comes on the podcast to know why we say the things that we say to each other. So, oh. Oh. <laughs> everybody. Sorry, you got a friend in, in your uh, sister with the twin initials. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you, you missed the beginning of the podcast when, when Smart said you sound like Bodie from The Wire. Yes, she did. That's not an insult. Brody was relatively well-spoken in, you know, Baltimore Ooh. terms. That's a uh, qualified. She said relatively well spoken. Now she's going in on your accent. She's I know that was real qualified. Not, she, she's see, still relatively see. well spoken in old school terms. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? <laughs> this is not what we do here. This is not how we build a black nation. <laughs> okay, we got to get to the, uh, <laughs> the main to topic. The Yes, let's get to the follow-up of, of our Purpose Driven Podcast. So, okay, so we started talking about finding our purpose and all of this stuff. And Buddha posed a question on Facebook, which you guys have done a great job of answering, is how do you want to feel? Um, for those people who have not listened to that podcast, which is episode 61, um, Buddha, tell us a little bit about the, the behind-the-scenes <laughs> You don't have to. First of all, you looked at me like that, and then your yeah, horns are sticking. I thought you were going to read something, so I'm like, oh, I don't you have to. You look like, like, like a deer. Your horns went like, what? Um, <laughs> I'm going to read an excerpt from your blog, but, I mean, mm -hmm. tell the background about why you wrote the, the piece. That blog. Um, well, basically because I was attending a, a women's conference that I helped to 
to do the programming for um, this past year. This was our third year. And um, the keynote speaker uh, focuses on emotional wellness. That's her area. And so she really was talking about the importance of self-exploration, self-inquiry, you know, getting to know yourself and being honest with yourself as a first step before you can do healing, basically. And so she, you know, asked us to ask ourselves the question, how do you want to feel? You know, she said, it's really that you stop and it's but, you know, whatever else you got going on, whatever the accolades are and the great things, supposedly, how is it that you really want to feel? And it's like when I did that exercise, just in that moment, it really stopped me. Like I had to, like I really couldn't even be present in the rest of the sessions for the rest of the conference because I sat with that and I started writing about it and I started getting honest about it. And, you know, I felt all the feelings and thought all the thoughts. And I was like, whoa, I got to, you know, there's some things I need to adjust right now. So because it was so powerful, you know, I wanted to share, number one, just about the conference in general. But I also just wanted to share it to anyone, you know, as a tool. So that's why I wrote the blog. Okay, so I have some questions for you because you wrote the piece on September 13th of 2013. So we are entering August of 2014. And you mm -hmm. said, I feel like Oprah when she goes back and like no. finds your clips of your life. Um, <laughs> so hold on, I'm trying to, um, to find it. It was something well, why are you doing that? Let me answer um, um, oh. Elder's question. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, he, said, Smart, what is it about how, he said, what is it about how I speak to remind you of Bodhi? The sound of our voices, accents, something else. It is the tone and it is your, your voice cadence. It's your, it's your the, the, the way, the, the, the speed of the words. And it's it's dripping with a certain it's like Drake is up here in light skinnedness and y'all are down here like y'all are relatable light skinned. So I still feel like he ascended to his ultimate form last week. I really do. Yeah. Like when he did the Goldie thing, yeah, he 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 was there. <laughs> wow. He channeled all of the energy of of his ancestors. But he wasn't. Um, there were no tears in his. There were no wells forming. You know, no no tears forming in the wells of his eyes. So oh he, yeah. We, okay. We got to get LB to cry on the next podcast, and then he will be in his ultimate light skin form. Oh my God, <laughs> yo. Wow, so Joe is that who hurt you? Was he light skin? I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. He had to. I'm sorry. Was he okay. In North Carolina? I mean. Okay, look, look, look. Okay, I found a part in her post. Okay. Oh, okay. What you said was, um, let's see, I took the time to sit with that this morning. The question, how do I want to feel? You said I journaled about it, I sat in the sunshine, I mulled, I wanted to feel energized, accomplished, cheerful, not superficially or for a few hours in the morning, but I want these feelings to pervade my day and influence my environment. At the mm -hmm. core, I want to be energy and be productivity and be good cheer. I felt that way before, I've been those things before, I know how to be that person. I'll learn how to be those things again in my new place and under my new conditions so in here, how, how do you feel now do you feel like you've come to come full circle to where you want to be or like looking at it now you know I'm glad you, you read that because I really didn't go back I haven't read it in a while so it's interesting because I think about that question a lot and right now some of those same things don't come up in the same way but I, I pr productivity still comes up right now and it comes up along with I want to feel courageous and creative and productive so it's interesting I am um, the cheerfulness I think that is definitely coming back I probably won't say that I'm as cheerful as I was in a previous part of my life um, but I'm much more authentically cheerful much more throughout the day so that's almost where I needed to be and it's not to the point where I mull over it or feel angst about it like I did at that time mm. so that's nice to see it's nice to, to kind of think about that um, but the productivity that's about a specific thing and I and it's funny that I didn't realize that I wrote about that at that time because that wasn't what was I didn't think that was that prevalent but right now you know one of the things I really want to do is um, move into fiction writing in mm. particular and it's like there's always a block, 
of some some reason or another. Like today actually was a big breakthrough in that. So I'm not going to really go all into it. But it's like I feel like I have this potential to be creative, but sometimes fear keeps me from really jumping into it. And so then I'm not productive because I don't have anything to show for all this potential. So it's like those three things are the things that I'm kind of you know, working on right now. Courageous, uh, courage, creativity, and productivity. You know, it's funny. I, I saw the post and I thought that I had already read it. And so I didn't reread it until yesterday or maybe today. And I realized that what I said, when because um, I didn't answer the question. When you first posed it on Facebook, I had no idea how I wanted to feel. Mm -hmm. And so then I thought about it and the phrase that came to my mind was, authentically enthusiastic which is hella similar to what you said yes it um, is and and it's funny like as I went and I read the post I was like oh my god because I did on Sunday was you, you know I do rituals for everything so mm -hmm. um, it was a new moon so I hiked to the snow mountain and I journaled and I prayed and I wrote down <laughs> authentic enthusiasm and I wrote down all these things that would make me feel authentically enthusiastic and then I, I brought it here um, I bought this journal back in 2005 it's called finding your inner goddess and it's an interactive journal and so I had written all these things in 2005 about what I wanted to be and I was so full of energy and as I read the words I started crying because I was like oh shit this was when I was authentically enthusiastic mm -hmm. <laughs> Then that I picked this up again and so then I just kind of it took me to a place where I was able to say okay this is what I want to recapture maybe not in this specific way that I was writing about in 2005 but doing these things and then I reread your post today and I was like damn I want <laughs> everything that you wrote was what I, I'm feeling now so I just thought that was super cool um you know so I just was like damn moon goddess and sun goddess here yeah. we go <laughs> It's true. I mean, I, I really don't, I didn't remember that I wrote that, but it's, it's true. Like that uh, being authentically cheerful, or authentically happy and not just kind of on the surface, which I think is kind of the key to it all. So when we get to a point later on that when I said I want to I have an excerpt I want to read, it's from an essay about what is happiness. So anyway, what, what well, about smart, you? Well, Smart, you said you wanted to be unencumbered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good I, word. Um, I have issues with obligation. Mm -hmm. so I like to do what I like to do when I like to do it and I don't like I don't feel comfortable in obligation I don't feel like I can be I don't feel like obligation gives me an opportunity to feel authentically about something mm -hmm. like you're obligated to like so-and-so because they're related to you no no and that's one of the, I guess one of the things that I have mm, taught my mother is that you're really not obligated to do anything. It makes me uncomfortable. Wait a minute. What is? Shout out to Smart's Fitbit. And <laughs> like a rapper who cares about her fitness. Shout out to the way LB has her uh, locks twisted and her ring. And shout out to Zeta Five. What? <laughs> shout out to Zeta Five Beta shirt. So Joe is wearing. <laughs> See, so this, is why, this is why the arguments come. This, this right. is why the arguments come. You started it, Sojo. LB wants to get start. shanked in these streets. But anyway, <laughs> yes, I am about my fitness, and F you for not being about yours. Get your life right. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, so unencumbered. Wait, wait, Smart, let me interrupt you for a second because Jeffrey asked, what does unencumbered mean? Unencumbered means that nobody else is forcing me to do anything or to think the way that they think. That's a great question, um, Jeffrey, because I think sometimes people say, and I forgot what show, maybe it was Two Guys, One Show, I don't know who it was, where people want you to feel happy the way they feel happy. They yeah, want you they to react the way they react. Mm -hmm. They want you to be sad because they're sad. And I or don't angry respond. because they're angry. Exactly. And I don't Mount respond <laughs> that way at all because there are many situations where I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but here's where I don't care. And But there, it takes a certain level of gumption to be able to say, whether it's to friends, to your parents, to say, hey, listen. I'm not going to let the way you think, which is based on your life experience, color the way I think and the way I feel. Amen. 
You know, so for instance, like, you know, I have relatives who are like, oh, oh, I can't believe so and so's marrying a white man, blah, 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 blah. I'm, it's, I have nothing to do with the fact that some, you went to some school in the sixth grade and you were the only black girl and no little white boy asked you to the freaking eighth grade prom. That has nothing <laughs> to do with me and that doesn't shade whether I should feel bad that my cousin or my friend or whomever is married to a white person. Like, I'm not going to take that on. And right. so well, I say, is it I'm like, huh? And I don't know. You're breaking up, sweetie. You are breaking up. I thought it was me. So uh -oh. occasionally people will try. Who's and breaking up? You, you are. are. People will Hello? try and make me take on their emotional responses to things. And sometimes I fall for it and I have to step my step back to back into my own self and say, hey, that emotion is not coming from my spirit. It's coming from your spirit and your um, life expectations. Mm -hmm. That's really important to, to know that distinction, though, because if you do go around kind of just, I don't know, living but not really reflecting, you know, like I like to always bring up, if you don't take the time to pay attention, you sometimes you do, you do take on other people's stuff and don't even think about it or it's easy to do. So it's um you know that's a that's a I can't think of the word right now but that's a it's a positive thing. I can't think of the word. No, <laughs> because there's so many you know in my head. I'm you know I have so many to choose from. But um <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's a benefit to be able to to do that and and say you know that's on you, that's mm -hmm. over there and I can understand where you're coming from but we're not coming from the same direction. So I think that's exactly. important. That's a good tool. And I would say too that society says that you shouldn't have a feeling you're aiming for. Like that your feeling should be reflective of what people in your environment feel. Like mm -hmm. if everyone else hates Sojo, right. I've got to hate Sojo. Like that doesn't to me make any sense. You know? Right. So, there's an expectation of how you should want to feel like so for instance I've asked a couple people since we've had this discussion how do you want to feel and mm -hmm. I I've, I've gotten happy and when I say well what does happy look like to you I've got nothing well mm -hmm. here's the thing I wanted to say about why that question was so powerful to ask mm -hmm. how do you want to feel because then like for example I've had the conversation um with my friends as well. Um, in particular, I was having a conversation with my college roommates last night. Shout out to Full House. Um, so one of the answers was, I want to feel confident and loved. Mm -hmm. And here is someone where if you were to look at their job title and the way that they carry themselves in a professional setting or whatever, you would think that they have all the confidence in the world. They always have the answers. They always have the way that they interact with people. And the first thing people on a personal level will say is, do you know so-and-so? The first answer everyone always says is, oh, yeah, I love her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so she is or she does appear confident and loved. So when you say, I want to feel confident and loved, I asked her to go back the same way what I did at the mountain was I put what specific things make, would make you feel the way that you want to feel. Like if you want to be happy, what does happiness look like for you? Describe a happy day. Describe a happy event. And then also look at what you have in your present life and say, okay, what things about that make you feel unhappy or happy? And then kind of go from there because I think people say these words and they still they know how they want to feel, but they haven't even thought about what it looks like. Right. Because as, as Crystal says on the read, words mean things. Right. <laughs> so that's why I say, if you say you want to feel happy, what does that look like to you? Because it's probably a little bit different for me. Mm hmm Well, and then there's kind of the idea of, like, what happiness looks like in terms of things, mm. and then, which those things do start to look different, but what is it authentically on the inside? Um, and so now I'm going to read this thing that I keep mentioning. Okay. Um, it's an essay, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just a part of it, by Daisaku Ikeda. It's called What is Happiness? And he says, what is the purpose of life? It is to become happy. Whatever country or society people live in, they all have the same deep desire to become happy. Yet there are few ideals as difficult to grasp as that of happiness. 
In our daily life, we constantly experience happiness and unhappiness, but we are still quite ignorant as to what happiness really is. Um, and then he says, a young friend of mine once spent a long time trying to work out what happiness was, particularly happiness for women. When she first thought about happiness, she saw it as a matter of becoming financially secure or getting married. But then looking at friends who were married, she realized that marriage did not necessarily guarantee happiness. She saw couples who had been passionately in love suffering from discord soon after their wedding. She saw women who had married men with money or status but who fought constantly with their husbands. Mm -hmm. Gradually, she realized that the secret of happiness lay in building a strong inner self that no trial or hardship could ruin. She saw that happiness for anyone, man or woman, does not come simply from having a formal education, from wealth, or from marriage. It begins with having the strength to confront and conquer one's own weaknesses. Only then does it become possible to lead a truly happy life and enjoy a successful marriage. Um, and then I'm going to skip to this other part where um, he writes, Happiness is not a life without problems, but rather the strength to overcome the problems that come our way. Yep. There's no such thing as a problem-free life. Difficulties are unavoidable. But how we experience and react to our problems depends on us. True happiness is to be found within, in the state of our hearts. It does not exist on the far side of some distant mountains. It is within you, you yourself. However much you try, you can never run away from yourself. And if you are weak, suffering will follow you wherever you go. You will never find happiness if you do not challenge your weaknesses and change yourself from within. Happiness is to be found in the dy dynamism and energy of your own life as you struggle to overcome one obstacle after another. This is why I believe that a person who is active and free from fear is truly happy. So it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of that constant work on the inside, which is kind of hard to explain or, or discuss when, especially in the, the social media society where it, all we do is, you know, or, or what you see is it's easy to show the pictures of something that's going on on the outside. Right. But where are the pictures that show you what goes on on the inside? So when we mm -hmm. talk about authentic happiness, well, what does it look like and how can we get to it? And how can we even talk about it in a way that's easily accessible? Where's the think pieces on authentic happiness? I don't know. <laughs> well, I would say that authentic happiness looks different for each person, but mm -hmm. there is a certain level of confidence required to say or to be open to your own individual authentic happiness. Amen. You now you have to be like, okay, mom, dad, homeboy, cousin, best friend. What you're looking for, what 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 lights your fire in life, is different than what lights my fire. And and that it takes a lot of confidence to say that because I mean I'm sure you guys have been in situations where onlookers like. Oh, I can't believe you have a problem. You should be happy. You are this, that, and the third. And you're mm -hmm. sitting there like, well, you think this is great because you don't have this, that, and the third right now. But when you get to it, you will see that getting those things is not is not the key to happiness. Right. right. Well, that's the thing. It's like that's all relative happiness versus absolute happiness. Like it's all based on those things. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the authentic happiness on the inside, it doesn't matter if you have all those things. You have happiness for a second, but that's not lasting. It's not true. I mean, so LB left, us a, LB left us a comment. It says, the question about how we want to feel is pretty thought-provoking. Like you all said, it makes a person dig deeper than the sur surface value of things. You've got to figure out things more specifically and then figure out how to achieve them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I did want to do was because people have have – trusted us enough to say things out loud on our, you know, show. I wanted to kind of, you know, help them go, like, because we talked about we were going to answer the question, where do you go from there? Exactly. So I wanted to go back and reread, because I know we've tried to read everyone's um, ways that they want to feel, but I wanted to reread them so that they could hear what they wrote. And um, Jeffrey said, respected, loved, and cared. Um, Lady Rose said, appreciated, loved, and fulfilled. Um, smart, you said unencumbered. Um, mm -hmm. Ruth said rested, happy, and secure. And then I said uh, authentically enthusiastic. Um, Chrissy, and that's the one whose comment we read in depth on last week's episode. She said she wanted to feel happy and free from bitterness. Um, mm -hmm. Learned tra traveler said, excuse me, <coughs> little present and connected. 
Um, Nicole A said, I want to feel fully aware that I'm living in the life I wanted and exist in those moments. And then Natasha said, loved. So I feel like um, you guys said how you want it to feel. And I feel like the next step would be to actually examine what those things mean to you. Like what does loved feel? Because I'm sure for every, it seems like a lot of people put loved. I'm mm -hmm. sure someone loves you. What would it take for you to feel that love or live that love? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. well, I feel like. <clears throat> mm. Well, well I would say this. For me to feel loved, well, <laughs> love translates into considered. Yeah. So if you yeah. love me, you will consider me in things that you do that impact us both. So, for instance, if mm -hmm. someone loves me then when they get that promotion they're going before they they might on like to some level accept that promotion that means that they have to move to some awful state and I won't name a state because I don't want the backlash <laughs> some, some state, let's just choose some state that only has two seasons of which are the colder of the two seasons if they could, if they love and consider me and consider my comfort, I call it being thoughtful. Then they're going to consider how I'm going to feel. They're going to ask me, "Do I want to move to flyover state? How do I feel about that? What am I leaving here? All those things they're going to consider without me having to have that without me having to initiate that conversation. They're going to be thoughtful of those things. And I feel like, for example, Jeff. Jeffrey put um, something about respected. I feel like, okay, Jeffrey, for you, what what would it look like with you being respected? You know, what does that look like in a day to day? Getting respect from other people. What does that look like to you? Like, how are you wanting to be treated? Mm -hmm. And then, um, actually, he just left a comment that said, "Always be positive. <laughs> if you are positive, you will find a positive vibe everywhere you go. But if you are negative, you will find negativity everywhere you go. So always be positive, and people will be positive back. So it, yeah, it, said that. he did. He talked about throwing positive energy out into yeah. the universe. Look how Jesus works. Go ahead. Right. Right. <laughs> um. There's another thing I saw too, because this one was about goal setting. Like we talked about finding your purpose, but this happened to come to me via email from um, Danielle Laporte. I don't know if you guys know her, but I actually she did this really cool um, blog post about how do you want to feel, and she did it based on all sensual terms. Mm. Like using her five senses, she described, I want to feel this and this, and like I want to, you know, um, hear this, or I want to see this, I want to touch this, I want to smell this, and that's how she defined the things that she wanted. And I'll post that um, a little bit later, but she mm. had some questions. She said eight questions to ask yourself before committing to a goal or a person or any experience for that matter. She said, the first question is, does going after this dream make you feel like you're making progress, like you're growing or moving forward? Does this desire that you have make you feel more like yourself? Because I think like when people put how they want to feel, does feeling this way make you feel more like yourself? Um, the third question, yeah, yeah, because you can say, I, like, uh, for example, somebody, you know, some people say, I want this job or I want this person or I want whatever. Do, will this make you feel more like yourself? Um, do you think you'll feel freer when you achieve this? Mm -hmm. Does going after this goal and not reaching it, but the actual pursuit of it, light you up, even if it means hard work? So not necessarily even just getting it, but the process itself, does it, does it set you on fire? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> does this opportunity clearly create more opportunities? Does saying no to things, and here's um, smart with you, <laughs> With me. And the thing does say does saying no to things so you can pursue this goal ultimately make you feel lighter. Because mm -hmm. you're okay with saying no because I my no is so that I can get to this desire that I have. Right. Yeah. right. That's real. <laughs> um then do you feel in total integrity? And then the last question, not that this entirely matters, <laughs> but would your kid or your grandmother or your best friend be proud of you or for what you're going after and how you're going after it? So it's almost like that gut check because our default sometimes always goes back to 
how we do things. Um, and I guess that's keeping the integrity thing in mind. Like you can go for something, but are you losing yourself in the process of going for it? You know, I like those questions, although I think three of them t seem like they're talking about the same thing at the core. Mm hmm. Says, do you, you know, do you feel more like yourself? Do you feel freer? And are you, do you feel like your integrity? All that's about getting to you, you know, like I like smarts were unencumbered. I think about that a lot. Like, you know, I like to feel free. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I feel free, I feel more like myself. Mm -hmm, and right. so when I feel free and like myself, that's when I start to feel more authentically happy. And when I feel like I'm making choices that lead me away from Wait, me feeling. What? You say? I'm sorry. I thought you broke up. So I started talking, but go ahead. Oh, I was just saying when I, when I, you know, make choices that um, lead me to feeling free and feeling um, th that way, then I feel more like myself versus when I make choices that I feel like because of either obligation or some other reason that does not, uh, I'm not really being authentically true to myself in some way, which is means I'm not in integrity and I don't feel free and I don't feel myself and I don't feel authentically happy. So I think that that's just a clear line. Those things are all connected to me. So what well, were we going to say? So Jeff. I was, well, was going to say, um, going back to something I think I shared with you guys on um, WhatsApp, Mm -hmm. So I think it would behoove us to take a deeper dive in what we initially say would make us happy because there were points in my life where I thought having children, that's what I want to do. Buying a house is what I want to do. And when I look back at those points and my rationale for wanting to do those things, it came back to one central point. I would say... God, I can't wait to have kids so I can make their Halloween costumes, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, blah, 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 blah. And then with the house, I would say, oh, my God, I can't wait to paint this, do this, blah, blah, blah. And what I would eventually realize is that it wasn't kids or home that I was looking for for happiness. It was creativity. Mm -hmm. and so I could avoid making those big investments of mm -hmm. children and a home or a official I own this home mm -hmm. and still be happy because the thing that I was looking for was the ability to create mm -hmm. that's at my core where my happiness stems from and as I've said many times before a lot of people are in a survival mode so they don't get to really think about ah, I said I wanted kids because I said I wanted a house because, I said I wanted to do this because, and they don't get an opportunity to string those things together and come up with a general, a more focused picture of where their happiness lies. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when you put that on WhatsApp, I remember I did a whole bunch of exclamation points after yeah. you, you wrote it because knowing you for all these years, that's exactly it. You are a very creative spirit. So for, to even come to that realization, like when you were saying, I think I want these things, but really it all came basically down to my pleasure principle being creativity. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, yes, that's it. That's you. Um, well, and that's the thing. It's like, it goes back to, and I think that that could be our next step. But part of our next step is thinking about how do you want to feel, but stripping away the things that are outside of you because in both of those cases those are things that are over there a child is outside of you a house is outside of you mm -hmm. so what about having those things ties back to something inside of you yep. and so the thing inside of you in that particular case was creativity and that's something that you can control and manifest mm -hmm. in lots of different ways even if you don't get the child or the house or you know so because we sometimes get defeated when we don't get those things on the outside or the things on the outside don't turn out the way we want but because we never thought about and I like that term you know we never thought about what is the true pleasure principle behind wanting those things outside of ourselves well that's yep. what I forgot to do when we first start getting into the conversation is I meant to lead the discussion off with basically mm -hmm. talking about Sigmund Freud and his model of the psyche and the id, the ego and the superego um, because the id of course is that basic primal instinct and they, they, they talk about it being something that 
Um, we have it since birth, you know, getting our basic desires met, but it's also that selfish part that allows you to say me, 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 me when we're acting. So then we balance it out, you know, with the other two, but the id is where the pleasure principle comes from. And mm -hmm. that's the part that's selfish. That's the part that's stripping away everything else and saying, okay, me for a moment, we'll focus on what I want and then kind of go from there. So I actually forgot to to talk about stripping away those things and getting down to that bare essence and that the it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing. You know, yeah. when, when you're focusing on self, trying to figure out how you want to feel, you're absolutely supposed to be selfish in that moment. Amen. But, but selfish has such negative connotations in our society. Like, if you say, <laughs> I want to then it's like, oh, you use I too much, or particularly as women, and I've said this many times on our podcast, as women, we're not supposed to think in an I. And unfortunately, lots of women get in these situations, make these life decisions, and end up stuck in a place where they really can't think of I because they've got children to raise, they've got a husband to support, they've got, I don't know, shea butter to make. I don't know what they're doing, but they got the, they created all these obligations that quite frankly the three of us are in a position that we don't have those obligations so I do sometimes want to take a moment and think about what can be done when you've already established those obligations well here, that's the thing you go back to the bear how do I want to feel and then look at those feelings and figure out like if you write down loved what think you feel loved because Somebody could say they want to feel loved and they have a, you know, a husband and kids and mom and dad and you know what else. So you have to go deeper thing and say what's the opinion. You can have situations like, for example, you said the part, you know, it's funny. I laughed when you talked about the part about buying a house mm -hmm. and it really was to, was to feed your creative spirit. Mm -hmm. I bought a house and all I wanted to do was decorate. I mean, <laughs> you know, so now, but now I am encumbered with a mortgage. Amen. So, but the mortgage isn't going anywhere. So now that I have this still, okay, so my desire was creativity in that moment. What other things do I need to be doing to feed that creative spirit? I'm still encumbered by the mortgage, but I can also do other things to create the feeling that I wanted to create when I bought this house, if mm. that makes sense. You can add um, sangria to smoothies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right here. This raggedy broad right here. <laughs> um, so we're we're coming up. Actually, we've kind of passed the nine o'clock hour. Uh, but I see LB made another comment. Hold up. I think he's doing two because he put one of two. Um, yeah. he says, I agree that being selfish isn't always a bad thing. <laughs> As Smart said, the word has a negative connotation, but in moderation, I think being selfish can allow a person to make sure they're okay. If I'm okay, I can take care of others as needed. That's real yeah. talk. That's the airplane principle. Yeah, the and then going to the on first. <laughs> going to the part where it's it because he said in moderation, but I do want to also include that, you know, in moderation can also mean that you're being apps you, you are um going overboard with being selfish in certain situations. Like when you're doing the exercise like we're talking about. Sometimes some of us still, even if I told somebody to write down how they want to feel they wouldn't be completely selfish in that moment because they're still thinking about family and all this and that. In moments like this, when we're asking you to go down to your bare needs of what you want, be totally selfish. Forget about moderation. Go overboard with that shit. Say, okay, this is all about me now. Yeah. Um, second part of his comment said, if I don't take care of myself, um, mental and physical health, then I can't do what I need to do for the people that are important to me. And I definitely agree with that. Um, and that's something that we always seem to have to reiterate to women because we tend to take care of others before we take care of ourselves. Um, but and that's you, because society tells us that as women, particularly black women, that we are supposed to be these mules, we're supposed to put everybody else in front of us, and if you dare not do that, there's something wrong with you, you're disloyal, there's a whole list, list of negative words that will be uh, taped to your back based mm -hmm. on you not, like, I don't know, fixing your uncle, your drunk ass uncle who molested you, his plate first. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Um, Buddha, you said something about a part three. Do y'all feel like we need to do a part three? To, I don't you know. Said, are we asking the people a question? What, what are they going to do next? 
Well, you know, ask some next steps. You know, actually, and I mean, I can. I'll have to ask and see if she's available. But um, maybe for part three, we can ask Akila to come on. I mean, it was her uh, work on self inquiry, and she yeah. might can talk us through what some next steps would be and talk yeah. about it. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, we, we could go ahead and put a piece. <laughs> huh? What, so we, do some, we do need to get some homework. I mean, like, because that's kind of, I mean, Miss Mark mentioned the fact that you could dig deeper into what those feelings look like or what they really mean, or like, we could think about some other. Well, well y'all know I love so a good I tell you what, So I tell you what, why don't we put the homework on our Facebook page? How okay. about that? Yeah. I mean, we can do that. So, we'll do that. We'll do that. so just breaking up, but I do love a good next step. Y'all uh -oh. know those action items. Okay. So we'll put Okay, so you gotta check our Facebook page. Yep. Yeah. Um so let's do cheers. Buddha, you got some cheers? Yes, I have two cheers. The first one is actually to Akila Richards, um, for inspiring these conversations. Um our, these couple of podcasts. So she's the one who asked the question, how do but how do you want to feel? And then I have to give cheers to me because today uh, was the last day of the month and I usually uh, set a goal of running either 40 or 50 miles and I thought I wasn't going to meet my goal this month but um, it turns out that I was able to meet it by running a personal long so I ran 6.36 miles that's the most I've ever run in one day so cheers to me whoop, whoop, whoop. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> smart you got some cheers Yes, I'd like to give cheers to a young woman called Kendra Cherry, and she um, wrote a piece on self-actualization, which is the core of what we're talking about. Um, what, a, what a man can be, he must be. This need we must call self-actualization. It refer, refers to the desire for self-fulfillment, namely to the tendency for him or her to become actualized in what he or she is potentially. The tendency might be phrased as the desire to become more and more what one is, to become everything that one is capable of becoming. And she, I don't think that's a quote from her, but from the psychologist, and I can't think of his name right now, and I, I'm embarrassed because I can't because, you know, the education and all. But, um, yeah, so I think I, I shout out to her because she put self-actualization in common terms, and that is at the core of what we're talking about, self-actualization mm -hmm. being exactly what you're supposed to be and what your potential um, leads you to be. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, um, my cheers is to the 40 Shades crew that is descending upon Miami Beach oh, right geez. now. Um, and I think that you guys know by now on this show that we are all graduates of historically black colleges and universities. Ooh, ooh. Um, Miss Mark is a bison. We're gonna save this cheers for the Rattlers. Um, <laughs> but what is you a bison? Being a part of an HBCU is just—it's just another example of kinship and family that we have because. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, when they see us, especially if you're in a fraternity or sorority, they always think we always bond over Greek life or your hometowns. But the thing about, you know, being in the HBCU and also specifically being a Rattler is once you hit families, campus, you are family. So they are all from our generation, like all through the 90s, um, you know, getting together for a 40 Shades celebration in Miami. So everybody's headed down there right now, so I did want to give them cheers, send them love, and tell them to be out. Oh, <laughs> one more thing. We didn't say this, but I encourage all of you guys to come to Howard Homecoming. Howard's Homecoming because... No, we're not making this a Howard moment. You see, we... We will be playing Fam You, and I'm trying to get these ladies to come... I just muted her. Um, so anyway, Ooh. shout out to the Rattlers. Strike. We may host a brunch <laughs> for you guys. No, how did she um, unmute oh. That's what I did. I had to unmute myself. A whiskey wine and mind. moonshine brunch during no. our homecoming. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> she keeps unmuting herself. Um, don't but, okay. be Patty tonight, baby. Don't be. Don't be that. Y'all yeah. have to be rowdy. <laughs> All right, so uh, Buddha, tell them where they can find you. 
Um, you can find me on Twitter at ND Collier, that's C O L L I E R, um, and on my blog at Coco Studio, www.cococostudio, singular, just one, cocostudio.com. All right, what about y'all? Um, you can find me in the D, the okay. D, sorry. Um, so, no yeah, um, you can find me on these interwebs, mainly on the Twitter, like twice a week, because I don't really like getting to it like that, because y'all know how to act. Um, I did buy, and I said this like a couple weeks ago, um, yeah, that I do have thinkprettysmart.com, and I didn't add any of my posts because I haven't had time because I've been really busy. I've been on work travel and things have been happening. <laughs> and my Fitbit tells me I'm only getting like three to four hours of sleep every night. And I don't understand what's going on here with Lady Buddha. But so you can find me there. <laughs> bitch is going to be. What did she get it ready to lead up to? And then it was like this whole. So I say all this to say that. There will be a whiskey, wine, and moonshine brunch oh, the God. Sunday of Howard's homecoming where the, we got to transport these whores up in here on a train, automobile, I don't know, Star Trek, like, beam me up, Scotty, or whatever. <laughs> so that's going to happen. So um, there's that, and I may be, if you see me on these streets, like, don't, like, like come up to me say, hey, boo, hey. But say it like that so I know you're not crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, you can find me. My Twitter handle is at S-O-J-O-X-O-X-O. -O -O. Um, my website is www.feminian.com. Um, and then I also have another one that's specifically, like, for my little, like, retreats and rituals and stuff. And that's phenomenal.com, which is P. H-I-N-O-M-M-E-N-A-L. Basically phenomenal. Basically phenomenal spelled with yen. Um, but anyway, so that's where you can find me. And you can find our podcast. Our main website is www.whiskeywineandmoonshine.com. We are all over the web. So if you just Google Whiskey Wine and Moonshine, you'll see our Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Uh, iTunes, Stitcher, you'll see all that stuff pop up on um, our Pinterest page if you want right. to, you know, books. Um, but also, just like oh. I said at the beginning of the podcast, lean on that PayPal button and give us a love offering and keep the party going. Um, <laughs> oh, I forgot one last thing because you said what? our Pinterest and books that we read. I just finished a book called uh, Who Fears Death by mm -hmm. I think it's Nettie Okorafor. And it was such great reading. So I don't know if it's an audio book, but it's on. Um, but uh, she's a Nigerian American author, and she got down on that book. So trigger okay, warning at the beginning. Are you gonna, what is it? Are you gonna, called, I'm sorry. What is it? Fiction or what is it like? It's a novel. It's fiction. Okay. Um, it's a. You know, there's a magical element, so it fits into that category of speculative fiction. The main oh. character is actually a sorcerer. Um, um, so Joe, that's you right there. It's, it's definitely it's I thought right about something more than once. Um, but how but, about you pin it on the Pinterest? That's what the okay. Pinterest is for. I, will, I just mm -hmm. read the book. So anyway, I'm just letting y'all know. So go ahead and check it out. Who fears death? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, cool. All right, y'all. Well, I'm about to wrap it up. So we're gonna tell everybody to catch us on this upcoming Tuesday at eight o'clock. Um, same bat channel, which is the Google Plus Hangout, so you can catch the live show or uh, Potomatic or Stitcher. So, good night, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.